I'm Jonathan guys, how are we doing and welcome to a brand new tutorial from my anyways, so today we are going to just see a complete tutorial on mastering Axios, going from zero to hero and of course allowing yourself to make an HTTP request like a pro. So for those of you who doesn't know what is Axios, Axios is an HTTP client library, it is super advanced and super super powerful and as well it is famous clues in here it has a 75k stars uh, on github and it is super powerful as i said before the api is super robust so if you want to just if you're a new new beginner and just starting off with you know web development and stuff it's going to be super easy for you to use on the other hand if you're an advanced developer and you want to just like you know uh consume pro features and pro functionalities axio is going to allow you to do that as well so they both help you achieve exactly what you want to do and of course it is as clear as in here open source is all being put on github and yeah it, the whole documentation here is actually in github because it's super lightweight and it has like a lot of features and the support is actually tremendous from all of different stuff like in here and you can of course go in and install it using npm or whatever or you can even use just like ds deliver or m package uh, for all different stuff and you can take a look on examples in the here of course it is based on the promise api so hallelujah yeah yes for javascript or es6 developers they all love promise based apis and here it goes you got axios for that so i'm going to be using axios trying to build some simple application which allows us pretty much um to create reminders for our like for our day to day lives so for example you got like um you want to buy groceries later on or just walk at the dog or something like this at the end of the day so you're just going to put the reminder there and going to create this application and of course we are going to consume the restful apis using axios so i'm going to be creating the client application that's going to consume the apis using axios so here's actually the, of course, I've gone before throughout this and I've created something really simple. Um, where is this? Uh, let me just uh, grab that. There you go. So this is actually localhost 3000. This is the application. Here we got a simple form that's going to allow us to add the reminder. Obviously, using ID reminder, the exact reminder, what we want to be reminded of, and of course, the time when the reminder is going to fire off. Of course, just like the timing is not going to work properly. It's just like for, you know, just an example. And here in the main, we've got the reminders. And here we're going to see the full list of the reminders. Right now, we don't have no reminders. And the code is actually not working because we simply just got React application in here. And we got just like some simple reminders. Nothing is being rendered or fetched from the database. So for the RESTful API that I'm using, I'm using JSON server. Which is also well an open source JSON server, just like feed it in with the, just like a JSON database, and of course it's going to allow you to uh, use a crude API. And there you go. This is actually the JSON or the database I'm using. Reminders with ID, reminder, and time, and so on and so forth. It is super basic, so you can go ahead and check it out in GitHub with a JSON server, and you can pretty much use it. So as I've said in here, we first I'm going to be doing going to be using Axios to fetch the reminders from the database and I've got a server running on port 9000 that's going to allow me to fetch the data in here and of course a crude so a crude API which means I can create, delete, update and of course request uh, whatever data I want for that server so it's all being pushed right there really nicely for me so here your first things first what you need to do is of course as we always do I'm um, going to install Axios, so I've already done that, but just can do uh, go ahead and do npm install Axios and make sure to save it as a dependency and there you go, you are actually ready to go and ready to start for that particular case. So after installing Axios and everything, I'm going to create a file called axios.js and here's clearly saying I'm using CRA or create react app project and I'm putting, um, I've got an Axios file in here. So what I want, I want to just export a default instance of Axios from here. And this is the really loved thing from Axios. What I do love it is actually it allows you to create instances with a default configuration that you can share and use it or reuse these instances without rewriting the whole code. And it's super, super mental in that particular case. So I'm going to be doing it in here. I'm first going to be like doing importing Axios from Axios. 
as simple as that. And eventually I'm gonna do like export Axios instance equals um, Axios create. There is a static method in here which allows it to create with a default configuration. I'm gonna provide it with a base URL. So this is actually the base URL you're gonna be using uh, in that particular case. So the basis you are on here, I'm going to be using HTTP localhost and um, 9000 ports. Um, what you can do with that, pretty much everything. You can have like a default headers and of course lowercase headers. Um, you, you can have headers in here. I don't think I've put, yeah, I need to comment in here. So as I said, you can have headers in here and you can pretty much put whatever type of headers you want. Um, for example, an authentication or auth header with a default value. And all the requests are gonna be made using this. Axios instance is gonna be returned from the create function. Uh, all of them are gonna share the same headers and those headers are gonna be sent in here. Um, just gonna create like simple auth. And um, yeah, we, we can we can pretty much do whatever. You can put the timeout. So how much does it take to time out the request? And for example, you can say three thousand for three seconds uh, for a timeout. And you can you can do pretty much a lot of things. You can like override or pretty much mock and change the response before it hits like the final you know endpoint or the final callback. And um, I think. Or you can do like max content links, max redirects, different kind of configuration. Check out the documentation for that. But the most important part in here is actually going to return an instance in here that we can reuse this instance with this default configuration. And most importantly, is actually the base URL I'm going to be using right here. So now we've got Axios from the base URL. I'm going to be doing in here is actually importing Axios. And of course, it is a named import. So I'm going to be doing um, from dot Axios. And there you go, we got Axios. This is actually the instance we've imported from there. And yeah, we got Axios in here. So we got Axios listing into the localhost 9000. So if you go, for example, to localhost 9000 in here, just to quickly check out what we do have and what we are actually working with. And I go on reminders. So there you go, we got the list of reminders. Of course, it's gonna return an array of all the reminders you've got just by hitting this. So we're gonna be doing in here first to get the list of the reminders, what we need to do is simply just hit this API localhost 9000 forward slash reminders and uh, using a get request obviously. And we're gonna be just getting that. So here's actually the main application and all of the requests are gonna be putting inside of this app component. And I'm gonna be using hooks because we want a modern uh, minimal like application API to work with. So I'm gonna be using React hooks in here. Uh, there are many tutorials out there covering how to use it with regular React components. I wanna just like cover it and how to use it specifically with hooks because a lot of people love to use in hooks, including me, of course. Anyways, now here I'm gonna be first creating a state and uh, this state is gonna be like holding up reminders and I'm gonna have set reminders and I'm gonna use state. So you state in here at first gonna take an empty array because firstly we have no reminders fetched whatsoever once the application of course is firstly mounted. And after that I'm gonna be creating a function. Um, it's gonna be named get reminder. So this function, what it's gonna be doing is pretty much gonna return a list of reminders and it's gonna fetch in it from the server we've got in here. So I'm gonna just have like a response. And using Axios, so we just do like Axios dots, and of course this is actually the instance we created. And here we can pretty much call a lot of like um, pre-made or methods that we've got, like post, gets. We just need gets in here, and the gets here takes like whatever URL I can't speak um, from the base URL we've defined because we've defined this is actually the base URL. So I'm going to be doing an add URL, for example, like reminders. So that's going to be doing exactly in here. So I'm gonna forward slash reminders, and we have no configuration, so you can put like you know extended configuration there. And I'm gonna be using catch. So if it has any errors, what I'm gonna be doing console log error. And yeah, there you go. So you got yourself an error. And uh, most important here, make sure to mark this as asynchronous because I'm gonna use async await. 
So I'm just gonna simply do await in here. And obviously, as I've said before, it uses promises. So you can do, if you don't wanna use await or async, what you can do in here, you can just go ahead and use it then, and then it receives a response, and you can do the normal callback way. But I would prefer to use, you know, async where it's more, much more clear, it looks like an asynchronous code in here. Now, if the response is really great, what we're gonna be doing, just gonna do set reminders, and um, yeah, we're gonna be having um, reminders. So yeah, I don't know. We have response dot data, and if here is response and response dot data, make sure to double check both of these, not only of that. And yeah, so here we're gonna be doing here. Just console log whenever it re-renders. I'm gonna have the reminders. I'm just gonna do like uh, reminders, just for you guys to see exactly what I mean by reminders. Now this get reminder uh, or get reminders pretty much get reminders function. Well, when we're gonna be calling this is actually once the component is mounted. So on dit mount hook, and here I'm gonna be using the use effects hook in here. And the use effects here can here, if you just leave it like this, it's gonna run every single render. We don't want it to run every single render, we want it to run only once at the beginning of the first mount. So it's gonna ask like a component did mount lifecycle. So by just adding this empty array, which means it just like happens to work and run only once. And I'm gonna simply just call get reminders, and everything's gonna be populated. The state in here in the array is gonna be populated automatically once the DNA is fetched. And yeah, super great. And I'm just gonna save up this. Um, it says fill to compile, so repuns. Okay, uh, yeah. So response, I kind of like not spelling correctly. And I think I'm just gonna inspect in here and. Uh, yeah, if we go look on the console, so it's clearly seen here we got an array. So this is actually the reminders we got ID, reminder, so on and so forth. So we got the full array. Now, if you want just like to see uh, the full data, for example, uh, let me just go ahead and do uh, console log response. So what the exact Axios response has. So I'm just gonna just like console log the response in here. And there you go. So the response in here has a data. So of course the response data, what we are actually using, has a response headers, the actual request you firstly sent, so you can have access to that, a status, which is an HTTP status code, and status text, which means either okay or timeout, different kind of like uh, status text. And here's actually the configuration that helped to build and send the request obviously there. So this is exactly what the response of an Axios looks like. It's super, super simple and clean. Um, yeah, you can use it whatever you exactly want to work with. Now, super simple, we got the reminders. What we need to do next, I clearly created before um, a reminder component, which obviously gonna render every single reminder by just like, you know, feeding it with the data, like the reminder time ID and different um, data we're gonna be needing in this case. So what I'm gonna be having is actually I'm gonna be looping against with all of that. So I'm just gonna do it in here. Is first I'm gonna check if there is no reminders. I'm gonna create a variable. It's called no reminders, which means the reminders array. This array is actually empty or it's not valid. So if it's like no reminders, either null or undefined, or if reminders actually valid, and we got reminders dot length equals zero, which means it is a valid array, but it is zero. So this one is gonna equal to true. Otherwise, if it is valid, it's gonna equal to false, of course, um, following this naming convention right over there. So I'm gonna be doing in here, like not, no reminders, and I'm gonna just like do reminders dot map. So I'm gonna map every single reminder, and I'm gonna have an index. So yeah, I'm gonna be importing a reminder. I'm just gonna put the props data in here because it just like takes the same names. So I'm just gonna pass directly the reminder data there. And make sure whenever you render a collection, which means you're actually rendering an array using a map on a React, make sure to just like provide it with a key, otherwise it's gonna like uh, super messy. You're not gonna be doing it okay. And yeah, there you go. So you see here, we got our reminders. We firstly fetch the reminders using Axios, super simply, axios.get, we provided with the URL uh, from the Axios instance, and there you go, we got everything happening to work exactly as anticipated. 
and eventually of course by rendering that it's super simple in react you create a state you do that you of course make sure to check out this um, you can even add something like this like if you have like no reminders and you can do something like um, h2 or something um, no reminders uh, found okay you can have like an empty no reminders thing and here's the actual reminder. So the first step of this ex example or application is actually fetching all the reminders. And there you go, we got all the reminders. Now what we need is actually to use this form in order to be able to add a single reminder to the database using the API. And of course, more specifically, we're gonna be using um, Axios in that particular case. So yeah, let's go ahead and, just go ahead and like create another function. I'm gonna name this function add reminder. So the add reminder function in that case is um, yeah. So this is this is all going to be done for adding a reminder, and before adding a reminder, we need to grab the data from this input. So this input, as soon as it changes in here, we need to just like update the data on a React state in order to keep track of this uh, piece of data, which means every single input all of these. So I'm going to be doing is actually creating another state. So I'm going to do like form data and set form data. So we're seeing here using hooks versus uh, regular state components or class components is actually much better than class components. It's super easy to work with. And if you just like need to prototype something real quick or set up something real quick, it can help you a lot doing that. So I'm gonna be just doing like uh, use state in here. And I'm gonna just provide an empty object because there's no data at first. So this form data, and I'm gonna create another function. It's gonna handle change. And the handle chain gonna take an event, which is either, and I totally forgot about ES6 um, error syntax. And once you handle that, I'm gonna just like do set form data. So I'm gonna get form data, which is was before, because every this this method or this function is gonna handle every single change or like a single input in here. So this event is gonna just like be responsible for every single input. So I'm gonna be doing it here. Uh, I'm gonna get event target dot name, which is the name of this input. In that case, I'm providing this name. So for example, ID or name equals reminder, whatever. So I'm just gonna like say this is the name. I'm gonna be using this as a variable, of course, and equals the target the value. So it's gonna equal the value of the input. As simple as that. Now we got the set form data in here has been set for us. And uh, yeah, it should be successfully set. All I need to do in that particular case is just like do on change. So once it changes, I'm gonna do handle change. Okay, I'm gonna copy paste for all of these, for the reminders, for the ID, and for the time input. And yeah, so now if you'd like, for example, um, we want to just like to input something in here, this form variable is gonna be our changing and we're gonna have it with data we want. Now we got all the data for the form data inside of that object. Now we can of course use this to pretty much add the data. So I'm gonna be doing it here, make sure to mark this as async because we're gonna use like async awaits. And I'm gonna do response awaits. I'm gonna use the Axios instance we created. You can create pretty much as many Axios instances as you would like to or as you need. So this is a super important step to be thinking about. I'm gonna do axios.post. So I'm gonna use a post request in that particular case. And it's gonna be forward slash reminders because we just like do a post to the reminders URL and here you provide it whatever URL you wanna just like uh, hit with a post request, with a post HTTP request. Uh, in our particular case, which is like reminders, then the second parameter after the URL is actually the piece of data you want to provide. In that case, we've got our form data. So you can provide a JSON data depending on your server, what does it accept. In our case, we are working with a JSON server, just like provided with a JSON, um, you know, schema of the data, just like provided like that, which is a key value pairs. And of course, it's gonna work for that our case. And if you can, you can of course add like a, a simple configuration for that particular request. We don't need to do that. And of course, we got error. So if any error happens, we're just gonna use the catch. We're gonna do error. And obviously, I'm just gonna print out uh, the actual error there. Super easy. And uh, yeah, we got the response there. So if we got the response, what we're gonna be simply doing is in our case, 
we just like gonna be refetching everything we just like gonna be recalling the get reminders uh, function but in other case you would pretty much like go ahead and populate um, pretty much the array by yourself because you don't want to just like do an intensive request on the server and an intensive request on the uh, network itself so you don't want to do overhead like that but in our case just like for a simple step so I'm just gonna do this again this is really bad thing to do so yeah you think you need to think about a better solution if you are gonna go production but on a case yeah it is super okay to go work with that simple enough now what we're gonna do it since this button is actually a type submit so whenever we submit this whenever we click the button or like we click enter enter this form uh, the on submit is gonna be fired up so we need just need to, by catching the on submit method or callback right here and I'm gonna just do like add reminder simple enough now what we're gonna be doing is yeah it should be working right now so for example we got ID 6 you're gonna add ID and this ID in here in that particular case because my server is actually working it's not a real world server but pretty much so we need to provide the ID but for you in some cases uh, or pretty much in overall cases what you're gonna be doing you're not gonna be providing the ID it's gonna be auto generated for you um, I don't know uh, take a shower or something okay let's remind ourselves to take in a shower because we work a lot and it's gonna be 6 a.m. okay so whenever I click enter um yeah there you go we got take a shower and he mistakenly just put that in here it doesn't really work that well but there you go we got the take shower it gets added for us and it gets refreshed exactly as we want it to be so it works super fine as we anticipate it to be uh, working now the second one which is adding or using post for uh, creating using Axios is actually working pretty much fine and working with React applications. So it's clear seeing how you got somehow an idea of how everything works. Now the last thing I'm gonna be doing is actually be able to click on this cross or this like delete button and of course get rid of like one of the reminders we're gonna be deleting in that case. Now if we go to the reminder components, we got this delete emoji uh, for the span and once we click on it, we're gonna be like doing on delete, we pass in the ID of the current uh, reminder we wish to delete and of course this callback is going to be just passed throughout props so what we're going to be doing is simply just going and passing throughout the props on the reminders and on the leads um, function so I'm going to be doing here const delete reminder it's going to take the ID of the reminder we wish to delete and obviously I'm going to just go ahead and do a like a request for deleting uh, I'm gonna have a response. I'm gonna wait. I don't have async in here, so make sure to do async. I'm gonna use Axios, and of course, as always, Axios has a delete method in that case. So delete makes it takes um, the part of the URL you need to hit for deleting, which is, for example, in our case, reminder. I'm gonna use like ES6 literal syntax just to merge or concatenate your strings. I'm gonna be putting the ID. So this is actually the format of the URL for deleting. A uh, single pretty much reminder just put the reminder then we give it whatever ID we want and we send a delete request for that depending on your case so it depends on what request you're gonna be sending in that so it just like it depends on the server you're actually uh, hitting in that case so eventually I'm gonna do a console log okay there you go super simple now check if it has like a valid response and everything what we're going to be doing is of course refresh the reminders by just calling get reminders again and um here so i'm going to be doing is um on delete i'm going to do delete reminder simple enough now we got the delete reminder and everything being hooked up exactly as you want it to be so for example, we've tried to like go buy groceries. We finished that reminder. Uh, we did it and everything. So we're just gonna cross it off the reminders list. So click that. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be exactly working. So I think this should not be a reminder. It should be reminders. So we want just to delete groceries. And there you go. We want to delete um, buy a birthday gift. Boom, here you go. Uh, you got all of that and of course you can still refresh those are completely gone out of the database you still can add like different stuff 
or you want like um, whatever in here and you can do for example uh, 4 p.m. click enter and uh, it's see whatever in here we still can be able to delete that and whatever manage as, as pretty much whatever we want in here so it's clear in here Axios works pretty well for that particular case I just wanted to show you exactly how to work with Axios including react and different rendering stuff and different scenarios so how to include Axios in react in that particular case from going from like a noob to pretty much a pro on working on different stuff like so just wanted to show you how exactly work with that because a lot of people should intend to love and work with Axios and still can't figure out how to exactly make it work the perfect way or the right way with the React application and do all the rendering and stuff like that. So you can take a look on the project, you're gonna find the link in the description below, you can find it in my GitHub repositories. Um, yeah, you can find this project here, you can clone it and you can play with it however you want. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching, I really do hope you guys have enjoyed the video tour if you want like more video tours like that. Um, yeah, pretty much just push that like button because it's gonna help me a lot and just gonna give me that, you know, super um, positive thoughts, positive power. So yeah, I appreciate that guys. And make sure to just go and subscribe because a lot of you watching my videos are not subscribed. So I really appreciate it if you just like hit that subscribe button. Without further ado guys, without further ado say, I will catch you all in the next video tutorials. Adios.